Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Saturday. Let's talk some mountain weather. My first stop is going to be up here in the mountains. Did some exploring this morning, found some peak Colorado fall color up there. I mean, look at that, just an avalanche of uh, yellows and oranges there. This was up near Winter Park here in you know, Colorado, so it is definitely uh, that time. If you want to see the fall color, do it now before it's gone. All right, let me take you up to the Pacific Northwest. So this is Whistler Black Home. We've got precipitation. Uh, the freezing level or the rain snow line right now is it's way up here. It's up at about 9,000 feet right now. It will be dropping tomorrow. It'll be turning a little bit colder tomorrow and then another notch colder on Monday. So that'll bring the level down probably closer to 8,000, maybe even 7,500 by the time we get into Monday. But precipitation happening up there right now. Here's radar across uh, all of the west. And I mean, you can really see the stream of moisture up here into the, uh, the Pacific Northwest BC, a little bit of overrun into Alberta. Uh, the lower 48th, we still have this, uh, this sort of remnant tropical low. And um, you can see it right here. We've got moisture coming out of Arizona. I'm assuming the circulation is somewhere right in here. So it's all kind of rotating around this area of low pressure. But some rain here. This is all rain across a lot of Albuquerque, uh, some of the high deserts down there, potentially making its way into Santa Fe, maybe into Taos in the next 24 hours as well. But uh, that's what we're seeing as far as precipitation goes. Um, so let me take you to... Um, my bullet points here and just kind of uh, run down these really quick. So we've got the remnants, the tropical storm remnants, tropical system. Um, that continues to meander across the four corners. It will affect more of Colorado uh, as we get into Sunday, Sunday afternoon, and Monday. Um, so that'll be inbound. We've got then, if we look down the road, two to three different storm systems through the first week of October, which will hit the west, the west coast, and then there'll be some overrun into the interior Rockies. And there is some, uh, there are some snow chances here across the higher peaks of the Rockies of Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and BC. You can see the dates or best odds of very high mountain snow here, and that'll take us all the way into that first week of, of October. Uh, and by the way, there's BC. So you've got precip happening today. You'll get a little bit of a break and then another pretty good batch comes in 930 all the way through 104 up there. Um, probably more though, higher chances closer to the coast, to the coastal range. So that's probably how that's, uh, that's going to play out. Let me just show you um, what the satellite, the water vapor satellite looks like right now. So um, Here's what we've got. So uh, remember on this, your your reds, your oranges, and even the black colors are really the drier air in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. So there's our spinning uh, remnant tropical low, and you can see it is bringing in that moisture into New Mexico like we saw. And then you've got, and that's really on the southern branch, and then you've got the northern branch running up here, the northern jet Big area of low pressure, so it's throwing all that moisture up here, especially into the coastal range of BC, and then there will be some into the interior um, as well. But look at all this dry air across Wyoming, Idaho, northern Utah, um, parts of California, northern Nevada. A lot of that dry air happening right now. Um, so that's the west. Let me take you back out here into the Atlantic. Let me uh, see if I can get a new image out of this. There we go. Now that the sun has come up, um, so here's what we've got. This is a tropical depression right here. That is now a tropical depression. I think it's nine. Um, if it develops, if it becomes another notch stronger, it will get a name if it becomes a tropical storm, and it would be, um, I believe, Imelda. Um, and then you've got Umberto, Hurricane Umberto out here. So that's a full-fledged, that's actually a major hurricane. So here's what happens. This is going to track up towards the Carolinas. And then it's the $64,000 question. Does it make landfall? Or does it get swooped up with a storm system in a front, a trough, and essentially, and get moved to the right before it moves into the Carolinas? That seems to be the latest thinking, that it will do something like this. Um, and... Um, Umberto out here will take a right-hand turn, so it's really not going to be a player. The two of, the, the two of these, though, the proximity 
makes it very interesting. They'll continue to do the tango and kind of dance near each other for uh, another few days out there. So pretty interesting setup. You don't see that a lot, especially with that close proximity out there um, in the Atlantic or Northern Caribbean. Um, let's go to, um, let me pull this. Let me pull this up here. I want to show you, I want to take you back to the United States here across the West. So this is the forecast radar in the future. I'm going to start this at lunchtime today, Saturday, September 27th. And when you see these returns on radar, that's the future radar. So if you were to see greens, yellows, and then eventually oranges, as you move up on the scale, those are more intense returns on radar heavier amounts of precipitation. So that's really what we're looking for. Um, okay, let me move this into the future. <clears throat> Here we are. This is early on Sunday morning. So on early Sunday morning, look what we've got. That tropical, that remnant tropical moisture is now curling up into Colorado, especially into southwest Colorado, southern Colorado. Um, some of that will be snow over the very highest San Juan peaks. Of Colorado. All right, let's move ahead. There's lunchtime. And look what happens by lunchtime. Look at all of this precip up here in the central mountains. So we're likely going to have some snow at the highest of elevations and then rain probably below 12,000, something like that, just kind of ballparking it. A little bit of afternoon precip here across the west. Let's move ahead in time. All right, here we go. The evening hours. This is probably dinner time. So this is dinner time on uh, Sunday. You've got moisture across the, the northern mountains of Colorado, central and southern, some leftover precip in New Mexico. Look at all the precip here in the, in the Pacific Northwest. And you've got a little bit of precip here, kind of showing up potentially over uh, the Tetons and the Wind Rivers there. That's dinner time Sunday. Let's go into early Monday. All right, so here's early Monday. We'll just say this is 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. Still some leftover precip, New Mexico, southern Colorado. But look what we've got here. This is a whole storm system moving in to the west coast, the Pacific Northwest. There's even precip indicated here over parts of the northern Sierra. So that's an entire storm system. All right, let's move ahead. Here we are. This is lunchtime on Monday. Um, so this is early on, uh, this is early Tuesday. So this is early on Tuesday. Our remnant tropical system across the four corners is dying. And what we're dealing with is more of a storm system, a big trough over here uh, moving into the West Coast. So that seems to be the way things shake, shake out. And what's going to happen is some of this precip is going to start to move into the interior as we roll into next week. This is These are the morning hours on Tuesday, but likely in the afternoon you would see a flaring up of the precipitation, so more widespread in the afternoon. All right, so that's forecast radar. Let me show you what the atmosphere is going to look like. So this is in the middle of the atmosphere, up at about 18,000 feet. These are atmospheric pressure anomalies. So we're either looking for higher than normal pressures or lower than normal pressures. Um, so this is today. This is Saturday, the 927. There's our remnant tropical low right there. You can see it. Um, interesting. There's a little area of low pressure there down in the southeast. There's our tropical depression. And there's Umberto. And then you've got all of this energy running up here. You can see the lower pressures up there into BC. Um, okay, now this is Tuesday 9.30, so a few days into the future. You've got both tropical systems dancing, and then over here you've got the big storm system. I showed you that. You could see it on that future radar coming in. Big area of low pressure, big dip in the jet stream. This would likely mean precipitation and cooler temperatures as it moves in. The thinking is that and I think that some of this is going to overrun some of the interior, especially as you move your way through Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. It kind of has that northern storm track look to it. Um, one last uh, inspection. This is Saturday, 10-4, so the 4th of October. And notice, lower than normal pressures right here, but notice this track of this. It's in the northern Rockies, the northern tier BC. This is where the center of low pressure might be. There might even be another one here. Um, but so that kind of brushes parts of Colorado, parts of Utah, but certainly more squarely in Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, the Pacific Northwest, BC, Alberta. So again, that's 10-4. So it does look like it's going to be more active um, the last few days of September into the first week of uh, October. Um, here is uh, the forecast. <clears throat> 
for birth that passed snowfall. And this runs all the way out through the 12th of October. And you can see what the model does. There's a little increase right here late in the month, and then another increase four, five, six into October. And this generates about four inches of snow during that time frame. That's a model mean. So it may be higher, as you can see by these, um, th these outer uh, fence numbers here, um, the air bars. I mean, it could be much higher. Um, so here's a 10-day snow forecast, and boy, has it changed since yesterday. You might recall it was pretty, uh, it didn't have a whole lot of action on the board yesterday, but today that's not the case. Certainly we've got a lot more, and it's because it's a more active storm track. I mean, you can almost see what's happening. The storm track is kind of like this. So you get most of the snow to the north of that, and that's what we're seeing, with a little bit on the south side as well through Utah and Colorado. I mean, you can see these pink colors. Once you start to get into the pink, that's six inches. So there's a lot of places that, that are at at least six inches of snow. The biggest sort of bullseye is right up here. Wind Rivers, Bighorns, Yellowstone, Tetons, Big Sky, Bozeman, uh, the high mountains around um, those areas. And you've got some snow up here near Whitefish, Big Mountain up in the parts of BC, Alberta. So that's a very interesting storm track with everything, everything kind of tracking in this direction and to the north. All right, let's zoom in on that map. So here's the snow forecast next 10 days. Out, and you can really see Wyoming, parts of Montana, parts of Idaho, parts of Utah and Colorado. So I mean, up here where you've got these bright pinks, I mean, you're looking at six to 12 inches if this holds. Down here in Colorado, probably up to six inches. Central to Northern Mountains, probably up to six inches. High Uintas. There, there might be a touch indicated right there over the very highest Wasatch. We'll see if that plays out. Um, and then you got snow up here, big sky, obviously, in parts of Idaho. That's a pretty optimistic forecast depiction right there. One more zoom into Colorado, 10 day snow forecast. You can see where most of the snow is. It's mainly north of I-70 up here, central to northern mountains, less in the southern part of Colorado. And some places are certainly up there at about six inches where you see those pink colors starting to pop through. Uh, nothing for Denver or the Front Range yet. Still looks a little bit too warm. Um, so there you go, guys. That's a look at the, uh, the forecast here on the Saturday out to, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days. Um, again, more active end of September and the first week of October across the West. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.